Hello guys and welcome back to the How to Animate YouTube channel and in today's video we've got something slightly different for you. Now I've noticed in the comments that a lot of you ask me how to rig stuff. I know a little bit about rigging but I'm no way an expert so I've actually managed to convince a friend of mine who is a rigger to come on this channel and produce some videos for it. So he's going to start off very basic and work his way up from there so if you do like the content then please give it a like and show him some support. He was very nervous about uploading these um, so yeah, please show some support and some love for him, and I really hope you enjoy this video series. Hey, how's it going? My name's Rufus, I'm a technical artist, and I thought it was about time I attempted my own reading tutorial, which is a bit scary. Um, I'm aiming to make this as accessible to new starters as possible, but without boring the pants off you. So hopefully they'll be quite short and snappy, and not too long-winded or verbose. Also, I'm going to be pretty much starting from scratch um, with Vanilla Maya 2018, um, so I won't ambush you with custom scripts or any crap like that. Um, yeah, so we're going to start from scratch with a bouncing ball rig, which is brilliant. All right, so uh, this is the sort of thing that I might get from a 3D modeler or a character artist. And by that, I don't mean a smiley face with a tail on the end. Uh, what I mean is a character that's made out of separate geometry. And there are a few things here that I need to do first. Uh, clean workflow is essential. So I'm going to go through and rename all these parts, as well as I notice that over here, there are some transforms that need to be frozen out. Um, as well as bits of history on some of these meshes that shouldn't be there as well. So I'm going to go through and clean up this mesh now. Alright, so I've just been through the mesh and I've renamed each part individually. Um, not going to go into it too much because everybody has their own way of doing things. However, I will suggest that you keep your naming convention uh, the same throughout um, and also the side indication capitalized. Uh, it's a good idea because L becomes very difficult to read in lowercase. So anything on the left side is normally indicated with uh, um, an, a left or an L and if that's uh, in uppercase it becomes much easier to read. Also, um, things don't need to be labelled as meshes, but generally I think it's a good idea um, if you've got a scene in with thousands of different, uh, different nodes in um, and you know what, the, what you're looking for is a mesh, you can go up here and you can type in mesh and there's a list of all your mash mesh assets in the scene. Okay, so there are all the mesh parts named properly. Uh, and next up, we're going to move the character into the position and zero out the transforms and uh, sort out the pivots. Um, but before we do that, I'm going to point out that there are some of the transforms that we need to keep. Uh, in this case, the right eyelid. Um, or indeed the left eyelid only works on one axis like that so if we do freeze the transforms on the eyelid it's not going to close properly um, and I'll show you very quickly if we go to uh, uh, probably modeling and freeze the transforms like that you'll see that the eyelid then goes wonky so control Z undoing that. Um, how then do we um, uh, create a clean set of um, transforms but still retain this rotational axis? Well, um, what we need to do is press control G to create an empty group node. And this gets created with zero transforms here. Um, we then need to uh, select our group node and the eyelid 
and then we go up to modify to match all transforms and you'll notice now that our empty group node um, has inherited the same transforms as our eyelid. So we then take our eyelid mesh and we um, make it a child of our group node here by pressing P and you'll notice now that our eyelid mesh um, has clean transforms here but still retains the rotational axes we need to close the eyelid. Uh, the last thing that we need to do is rename the parent of the mesh something sensible like char right eyelid and then mesh buffer because it's acting as a sort of transform buffer for the mesh stop okay so here's the geometry for our eyes and our eyelids with the buffers put above the mesh object to keep the transforms clean but still hold on to the orientation that we need and just before I move on from this can of worms I feel like it's worth explaining a little more before I put it to bed but if you make a mesh you have two nodes the shape node which stores the parameters of the object like that and above it you have the transform node now the transform node holds world space transform information however if I create another parent above this transform node so I'm going to press control G to make an empty group and then I'm going to match the transforms of the object our cube and then I'm going to select the cube and then the new parent our group our cube now has zero translations in relation to its new parent so we've got a clean set of translations here but the same orientation as its parent node and if I press shift P to unparent the cube and put it back into world space our transforms reappear so yeah just gonna delete that that's uh, that's really important and the fundamentals for building controls in rigging all right brilliant so next is the tail which is located at the back of the character and if I select the mesh then I notice we've got some dodgy transforms here um, we've got some history here and the pivot is in a not so obvious place here and this will all be legacy left over from the building process now uh, as a rigger what I want to do is make my life as trouble free as possible so uh, for me the best practice on this would be to reset the pivot to the world origin 000 zero out these transforms here and delete the history like this so if I press insert to bring up the pivot manipulator and put zero into the world transforms here to snap the pivot to zero there and I'll go up to here to freeze the transforms like that and then delete the history up here cool and now that's a clean mesh so if the modeler or the artist that you work with says hey I'm gonna make a new tail then you can give them this one and know that the updated tail can just be snapped back to the same place 
uh, without you trying to have to sort of offer it up with some kind of by eye method. So there's a few more things that we need to do to finish the cleanup process. Um, one is I'm going to send these nodes to hell like that. Uh, they weren't doing anything at all. Um, so now they're going to spend their life in eternal damnation. Um, next up we're going to select the buffer nodes here. We're going to select the um, mesh for the tail and the body and I'm going to press Control G to group them like that. Um, then I'm going to double click on here and call it something obvious like geometry. So that's all our geometry is now placed under one node like this and if I click to expand it there are all our nodes inside it. And if I close it again and I press shift click it opens up the entire subtree fully and with that said I'm going to select all the nodes in that geometry node here. I'm going to go up to edit and I'm going to delete by type history. So that gets the history off all the geometry. Now, last off I'm going to select the body and I happen to know that this uh, sphere was made with uh, a <laughs> the sphere was made with a diameter of 20. So I'm going to lift it up by 10 like that and I'm going to rotate it down the z-axis by making sure that discrete rotator is on and just spinning it around like that and then turning discrete rotate off by left clicking and holding down E and unchecking it like that. Last of all our transforms are on the geometry node here so I'm going to go up to modify freeze transforms and get rid of those and then I think we're ready.